basically I was uh, training in California for the Senior Bowl. Um, it was in late January, right before the Senior Bowl. Um, and we were just going through some drills and I planned it wrong and went down. Uh, so yeah, I mean, immediately I was just hoping that it wasn't a serious injury. I mean, kind of in the back of my mind, I kind of felt like there was a possibility. So um, ended up uh, tearing it. So uh, and then my, really my mindset was just getting back to work and getting back healthy. Um, as far as the draft goes, I mean, I felt like I had put enough film in college out there to kind of make coaches feel good about the knowing what type of player they're getting without uh, the kind of the pre-draft process. So, um, yeah. JJ, what what are you able to do this weekend, and, and what are you hoping to accomplish this weekend as you? <clears throat> kind of get assimilated into the NFL, but also are still dealing with, you know, obviously the recovery process and the, and the injury. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm just hoping, obviously, to get around the coaches, get around uh, the other rookies and uh, kind of create that bond and then obviously learn and uh, from a classroom perspective and then just um, kind of soaking up knowledge on the field and being around coach and things like that. And then also kind of getting to know the training staff or the athletic training staff and just people around the building, so. Mike Chapel. Right, is your mindset, I mean, everybody heals differently from injuries. Do you anticipate doing something this year? I mean, this isn't going to be a, a red shirt year for you, is it? Uh, yeah, the goal is to be back playing this year, so that's what I'm working towards, and uh, that'll play out how it plays out. So. It, it, will it be tough being aggressive but patient? in your rehab, is that a tough balance to have? Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody wants to get back as fast as possible, but obviously you uh, have to deal with these in injuries uh, the right way and don't want to push anything too hard uh, and kind of like uh, make it worse or kind of mess up your future or set you back. So um, obviously I'm, I'm working hard to get back as fast as possible, but I'm definitely being careful with the, the whole situation. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, Dale, what's your next kind of signpost in terms of your recovery? What's the next thing that you get to do uh, as, as you go through this rehab? Uh, hopefully that'll be jogging and running, so. Mike Wells. Now, I know you mentioned that you felt like you had enough stuff on tape for teams, but how much were you worried that it was going to cause, cause your draft status to drop? And when the Colts took you in the second round, were you surprised they took you in the second round, you, knowing that the uncertainty of you may, of uh, when you'll be back on the football field? Um, no, uh, I really wasn't surprised. I was kind of, um, I was kind of the, the consensus I was getting from teams and kind of my team around me, like my agent. So um, that's kind of what I was hearing. So I wasn't exactly surprised to be taken around that area. Um, Obviously, like you said, uh, an injury like that can can hurt your stock. But uh, I mean, the coaches and the the organization is pretty confident in um, technology and and the the trainer's ability to get me back and get me fully recovered. And they know uh, that it's not necessarily a one year investment; it's an investment for a, um, a, an entire career. So um, I think that's kind of the mentality they they had when they took that risk on me and, and chose me. With, with that said, you being a competitor, I'm sure you want to be on the football field, but we're teams telling you, I mean, not only the coach, but any teams you talk to during the process, it's okay if you don't play this season because it is a long-term investment? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of teams kind of had that uh, that mentality, and um, which is fine. I mean, obviously, I want to be back as soon as possible, but uh, if, if the doctors don't feel that's that's the best idea, then I'm, I'm more than ready to – take time off and just work on my craft and be back for the next year. So um, whenever I'm back on the field, that's when I'm going to be able to help this team and contribute. And uh, I'm excited to get there. Phil Axon. Hey, uh, when, uh, when did you realize that you were, you were a, a, an NFL guy and, and maybe a high pick? When did you start realizing that, that, was, that was a possibility for you? Um, I mean, I'd like to say I felt like I knew that my whole life, but um, uh, I guess kind of earlier in college, uh, my coaches kind of told me that. Some of my high school coaches told me that, but I, 
I guess I really didn't realize myself until um, after my freshman year. Um, not that I, I had a great season or anything like that. It was just kind of after getting a feel for what the SEC looks like and playing some uh, high draft picks, I felt like that was something that I could be successful in after after working in my craft. And I, I felt like I did that and was blessed enough to get to this position. Coach Bradley? Daniel, have you dealt with a major injury before this? Um, this is the biggest, uh, this is the most serious injury I've had. I had a broken hand. Um, it was a little different situation, though. So uh, I, I played with that during the season. So it, it wasn't an injury like this. So. Have you talked to any of the other guys about uh, just dealing with the frustration? You talked about the balance and, and needing to make sure you don't do anything to, to uh, you know, je jeopardize the future. But have you talked to anybody about dealing with frustration? Because I'm sure as you go even through this weekend, you're, you're going to want to be out there on the field. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's that frustration. It's difficult to watch other guys on the field and not be able to be out there participating. But, um, yeah, I've talked to my, some a lot of my college teammates so just uh, about going through this injury process, and I've t spoken to them throughout this process. And uh, they've been there to support me and kind of um, – ease any worries I had and just help me kind of stay focused and stay motivated throughout this. Kind of quicker. Kyle, uh, what have your early conversations with Quiddy been like and what's the vision for you and him here going forward in Indy? I mean, they've been good. I mean, uh, obviously we're just two guys uh, getting to know each other, uh, just meeting. so. Um, I mean, but we're excited for the future. I mean, I, I think we both know uh, what we can do together and the kind of disruption and uh, the havoc we can wreak on NFL quarterbacks. So um, I'm excited for the future and excited to get back out there with him and the rest of the D-line and the rest of this defense uh, and hopefully get to win the championship. So that's the goal. Did anything go into 54, the jersey you're now wrapping? Um... A little bit. I mean, I, I, I was 54 pick, so I kind of figured I, I might as well get the 54. Uh, I saw it on the list, so um, that was kind of part of it. Did Gary Slender say anything to you about 5'4"? Uh, no, I haven't, I haven't spoken to him, so. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Holder? Hey, Dario. Uh, I'm wondering two things, uh, two questions. Uh, where have you been since the injury? You've, you've been rehabbing, I guess, and now you'll be doing that. I assume with the Colts, will you stay in Indy for now and through the, you know, until the season, or what are your plans in terms of rehab? Uh, yeah, so I, um, I originally was rehabbing in California where I had my injury, and then um, later on rehabbing at school at Vanderbilt. Um, so. Yeah, I will be rehabbing with the Colts as soon as that's possible, um, according to the league and what the rules are. So as soon as I, I'm able to get up here and be rehabbing with them, I will be. And then uh, unrelated question. Um, it, it seems like you made a big jump your your last season at Vandy. Um, would you agree with that? And, and if so, what, what kind of changed for you? What clicked, if anything? Um, for me, uh, I felt like I, I progressed every year I was in college and just got better every year. I mean, I came into college really not knowing much about playing defensive line. So um, kind of that progression uh, just came through repetition and finally kind of those gains adding up and those um, just getting better every day and just adding 1%. So that's kind of that accumulated uh, work just kind of paid off. And then um, – just kind of learning from the coaches around me. Uh, having I had a new position coach this last year who helped me a lot. So um, just some of those things were things that really helped me this last season. I felt like, uh, once again, it was just progression from work from all four years of playing and just experiencing SEC football. So. When we spoke to you on draft night, you maybe getting a call from DeForest Buckner. I talked to you a little bit about knowing Robert Mathis. Now that there's been time passed between you actually getting picked and getting here, have you spoken to them personally? If you give us some insight into those conversations, have you seen Mathis and just where that's gone and who he's really spoken to? Yeah, I mean, 
they both really just congratulated me. I mean, we haven't had extensive conversations in the last week, but um, they pretty much just both congratulated me and said they're they're happy to have me around. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to get to work with, with both of them and kind of soak up the knowledge they have. So. I know, judging by what you said earlier, I assume you didn't know Quiddy Pay before whatever this weekend. Um, did you watch him at all on film, or have you seen highlights of him? And, and if so, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I've watched I've watched Quiddy play before. I mean, I, I watch a lot of football just in general, so I've pretty much seen a lot of guys. Um, yeah, so I've watched his game. I've watched kind of the relentlessness he plays with, and I like the way he plays. So. Um, I'm excited to be able to play with them. So, um, obviously, I didn't know him before this weekend, but uh, he seems like a, a good dude. <laughs> do you uh, do you see similarities or in, in your guys' games, or do you see anything that you're like, man, I wish I had that? Um, I mean, yeah, I see similarities in kind of the mentality we play with and the tenacity we play with, and I think that's kind of the reason we're both here um, uh, to play for this defense. I think that's kind of the – the uh, identity this defense plays with. So um, I see similarities in that way, but um, obviously we're different style players and different body types. So um, we have our similarities and uh, in differences, but I definitely see uh, how we're related as far as uh, our mentality and the, the relentlessness we play with. Your three more, Jim Hey, Daniel, uh, you got a chance to talk to some, some of the scouts who looked at you, and they, they, they were comparing you to first-round picks after your, your junior year. Just curious, did, did you consider coming out after your junior year? So what made you want to stay for that last year? Um, it was something that was in the back of my mind, uh, kind of like going through the season. But uh, at the end of the season, I really didn't feel like I was ready. And I, feel like, I didn't feel like I had put uh, the tape out I wanted to out there. and. Um, so I decided to come back, and I felt like I needed to mature a little bit. So, um, and I'm glad I did. I feel like that was the best decision for me, and uh, and coming back and staying one more year. Larry Overton. Dio, I'm not sure if you've been made aware yet, but you provided quite some excitement in the draft room. We've learned about this among the scouts that they nicknamed you Hurricane Dio in yeah. the process because of how disruptive you were. Have you been made aware of that nickname? Yeah, I have. I have heard of this. <laughs> Is that pretty accurate to describe the force that you are, how disruptive you can be on the defense, and how much do you embrace living up to that Hurricane Dio name? Yeah, I mean, I definitely see where the name comes from. Uh, and I, I mean, I definitely would like to live up to it. I feel like I definitely think that is a solid way to describe the way I play. Um, kind of like you said, that disruption I bring to the game. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to get out there. I mean, I I like the name, so I mean, I hope it sticks. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm excited to get out there and let the hurricane loose. So we'll get the hurricane sirens ready. <laughs> the Absolutely. Last question, Joel Erickson. Dio, did you say that you, you hadn't played much defensive line until uh, college? Yeah, so I, I pretty much just played defensive line my senior year of high school um, up until then. So uh, my high school, we, it was 4A in Texas, so we played both ways. Um, basically, everybody played both ways. So I played every snap, offense and defense and special teams. So um, until my senior year, I was playing on defense. I was playing outside linebacker in a in a three four. So um, it was a little bit different. I was standing up, so I didn't play defensive line, true defensive line, until basically my senior year of high school, and then um, I guess college going into college. So this would be my fifth year last year playing defensive line. Was it scheme change that moved you to the defensive line your senior year in high school, or did you get too big to play outside linebacker? I mean, yeah, it was scheme change. It was partially scheme change and then um, kind of like positional needs. So I actually, on offense, I played wide receiver. And then um, my senior year, I moved to O-line. So we needed an O-lineman. Um, so I, I basically just did whatever the team needed at the time. So that was kind of how my high school career went. It just. So wait, 
So wait, how big were you when you were playing wide receiver? I mean, the biggest I probably was at wide receiver was probably like 220. Yeah, and then that off season I got a little bit bigger. I was probably up to like 240, 245. Um, and that's when I was playing O-line, playing tackle, first team all district, so, you know. <laughs>